Stacey said we have to make a drinking game where whenever you do a Zelda reference, we have to drink. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> um, as long as you have to drink and I don't. Hey, welcome to episode 164 of Front Seat Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Blake. Hey, Nick. And Paul. Hey. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. Pretty good. Good. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, video games, huh? Yep. What about them? <laughs> what I about them? I've played <laughs> some video games. Really? Once. Wow. Tell me about that. It was good. <laughs> nice. Well, <laughs> that's all we got time for. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Blake, let's start with you. What have you been playing? Um, I have been playing the Diablo beta. Okay. Um, and it's pretty good. Paul? Uh, I've been playing the Diablo beta as well, and Big Ambitions. Big, big, all right, let's talk about the Diablo beta, because yeah. I haven't played it, mm. um, and I want to hear uh, your opinions. Hit me with them. Um, well, what did, you, what did you think about it, Paul? <laughs> um, so... I play. I played last weekend and this weekend. Uh, last weekend, I played a barbarian and then got like a sorcerer and a rogue, rogue, something like rogue, um, to like very low levels. Mm. Uh, I had a lot of fun on the barbarian. Was it was like my first character, and I was really paying attention to the story, doing oh, yeah. everything slow, talking to people. Yeah, um, yeah. The story itself and all the cinematics and stuff are like fantastic. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's they always have great that, production values. Yeah, always great production values. Um, and the story itself seems cool, and I uh, really liked that side of it. Uh, as far as combat goes and like skill builds and stuff, it seems a little bit lackluster. Mm. Um, everything looks reasonably flat, flash, flashy. Yeah, and reasonably good, but not crazy um given that it's like a brand new action rpg that's like just come like coming out yeah um, I, I don't know what i was really expecting but yeah i don't know what you're expecting either because it is a blizzard game and blizzard is notorious for trying to keep like system spec requirements pretty low yeah i suppose that's that's fair are you saying like flashy as in just like effects or you mean just the, like the look and feel of it it some there's a lot of detail in towns that mm. is like amazing once you pay attention to like you go into a room and it's like fully decorated yeah. there's all these little knickknacks and things but then you go out into like the open world where you're running around doing quests and you get massive stretches of space with just like a bit of cavern or cave on the side yep, yep. nothing else around and like for uh, some reason there's no enemies either you get I'm, I'm massive okay with that though of... like i i don't I don't think that, uh, I don't like the vibe of like, as soon as you leave town, just everything is attacking you like constantly. Every, mm. every two seconds you've got new enemies. It's just this constant stream. I like a little bit of downtime and stuff like that. Like, okay. I like after, after there seems like there's packs, right? Like there's a big, you'll, you'll yeah. walk out of town and it'll be a bit of a lull for a while. Then you'll encounter a, a pack of monsters mm. and then there'll be a little bit of a lull and then another pack. And then you might find like a side dungeon or like one of those like event things that you have to like, like yeah. a timed event. Um, I, I really did like the events. Those are differing enough and fun and yeah. feel quite rewarding because those they drop the murmuring orbs, which you can then go trade for a chance at a legendary. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't get any of <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> Like legendary stuff. Like well, I had one of my mates. I was playing last night, and he was telling me about like all the, the gear, stuff that, you can do. Where like, you, because there were there were side dungeons that it tells you on the map what the reward will be. Yep. And if it's not for your, character, if it's not for your class. There's something you can do. You go to some vendor and do something, and it like, like rerolls like, it. Something um, like that. I, so, I don't know if it's a full reroll or it might just be like it gives you a resource that goes towards like getting um, what it something. does is it unlocks these things. I think they're called aspects. Um, and there will be one, there's like 
one for each ability for each class. Mm -hmm. And those ghosts just become a thing you can craft onto gear. Right. Using resources from breaking down other gear. Yeah, yeah. So, so they become like a token that you can use to make a legendary from a regular piece of equipment. Yep. But I for see. a specific skill? Uh, so each, yeah. Mm. It'll be like a particular interaction with a skill that might make right. that skill. Um, I think I saw one for Necro that uh, caused enemies to be sucked into your ground AoE thing. Right. Mm. Well, you regularly just have that normal ground AOE yep. thing. Does a bunch of damage. Yep. Yep. This yep, yep, yep. pulls so in a black it. hole kind of yep. thing. Um, uh, gear. How many tiers of gear are there? You got your normals. You got your magics. Presumably, you got some rares. I, I think yeah. it's then there's legendary and unique. And, there's uniques. Yeah. And, and uniques are below legendaries, right? I think uniques are above legendaries. You can't get them. Uh, the only thing I know about legendaries, because I haven't seen any in the betas at all. Okay. Um, is that. They start dropping from like world tier three. Uh, when you start the game, you can. Um, what, and what, where, how far through the game is that? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, like we haven't seen it. I see. Uh, uh, so when it's you not start an, the game, when the you start a character, it allows you to choose one of two tiers. Mm. It's like regular and veteran. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think veteran is tier two. Oh, yes. And then there's another difficulty you can unlock on top there's... of that, and then another one. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a tooltip on one of the loading screens that said. Starting from tier three, uh, you could get, what do they call like They call them like build enabling uniques or something. Or right. A, oh, yeah. So yeah. You, you haven't got uniques either? Just just legendaries. Okay, I see. Uh, so... Legendaries are really common. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> interesting. How many stats are on a legendary? Uh, maybe five or six. Okay. It's... it's a legendary is just a regular item with whatever one of those skill modifiers is. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about. Um, so one of the comparisons, and I, I have not played uh, yeah. the D4 beta, um, but I've seen comparisons to D4 as it's D3 and Immortal combined. I haven't played D3 in so long that I honestly don't really remember most of the item system. Yeah. I think the item system was pretty simple, but I don't think it was nearly as simple as Immortal. So that was the thing that was mm. worrying me. It's like, okay, ultimately an action RPG lives and dies by its item system yep. for the most part, or at least it's a very important part because it's yep. the thing that people chase, right? Um, so I'm curious about how they handle their itemization. Mm. I had seen some blog posts uh, like a few years ago about their itemization and it led me to believe that they were not still quite understanding what it is that makes a chase item, um, especially because I think it was it was the blog post that talked about being able to make any item into a legendary or any item into a unique. Yep. So they have well into a legendary for sure. I haven't yeah. seen anything about making the uniques. So to me, that feels at odds with what you want out of an action RPG. <laughs> Um, there is a, yes, like I, I don't disagree, but there is a weird thing with the game where those mods that are on the legendary, um, for the most part, more important than the rest of the things, um, because it, wait, they wait. will change how your skill interacts yeah. with other skills and yeah. with, with enemies. And once you've got a few of them, you base your build around those skill interactions. Sure. Yeah. So if you couldn't just place the legendary thing onto any item, you would be waiting forever to get another one that does the same thing or to yeah. change your build once you got another I guess it's like the idea in POE, right? If you if you get like a good unique early on and you base your build around it, but then you outgrow the power of that unique. Yeah. But that's that's by design, right? Yeah. You're, you're, it's a trade off there. Yes, but this is I guess you could say also by design that they're like, no, we want you to be able we to don't keep that. We don't want you that. to trade off. <laughs> yeah, well, we want you with... to keep that same thing going through that whole game. <laughs> the difference with POE is that you've got like all these support gems and all mm. these, these things. Yeah, it sounds like those whereas... are the support gem role, basically. Yes. Um, so without it, I just don't see how... Like, essentially, the le the modifier on the legendary is your support gem. Yeah. And yeah. all you're really doing by making a another rare or legendary is socketing a support into it. Yeah. I actually like that way of thinking about it. It makes it. So then I guess, and so you haven't seen any uniques yet 
Have no. they have they posted any anywhere? Like, I haven't it, looked at any okay. of the marketing stuff. Because uh, I'm curious what if if a legendary is essentially a rare with a skill modifier. Mm. What does a unique do? Like that's yeah, I don't that's know. my big question. Mm. What, mm. Uh, and is that where the chase lives? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. The thing that um from early like marketing materials and blog posts that it intrigued me the most was their I think they called it like the Paragon board. Yeah. That's um, all locked currently. <laughs> it's locked? Yeah, you can't see it. You can't even <laughs> Yeah, the <laughs> tab is there. The tab is grayed there. out and you can't even look at it. That's interesting because you can only get those at le after level 50 as well i think what oh, no <laughs> also um so the so the skill tree oh, right dear. yeah um did you get a did you get a what was the max level for beta was it like 25 25 did you get a character to 25 yeah, I got the did, you get, to 25. did you unlock the full skill tree then uh no you can't get the last thing but the last thing is just like pretty minor it, none of it is uh it's not a new skill yeah it's just a like a mastery all oh, right that but changes so then something else that's weird because if you're able to almost completely unlock the f skill tree yeah. at the end of the first act yep what are you doing with for the rest i guess that's a really good question are you just putting more points in in well, skills. is that the full um, skill tree? Is, is well, that, that's a, that's a good question. Is it the full skill tree? Oh, that's you know, an interesting it, point. Um, actually, are there is there some know. sort of ascendancy style system, or is there more branches to the skill yeah. tree, or is that when you unlock the paragon points? Well, like, yeah, I, uh, my assumption was that everything after that was going to mm, be in paragon. Yeah. The weird thing though is that where you get up to in the beta, you have enough points to start like. To, but you can only use, I think, five active skills. Is it five? Maybe I I've can't heard remember. six, but I don't. I don't. Maybe it was six. Um, something I've heard. So who knows? Which sort of? This is, sorry, I just, I just want to interrupt. This is a classic <laughs> moment where we are just veering yeah. into unknown territory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not bothering to look it up. <laughs> like I was literally, I was literally it playing up. it like an hour ago, and <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, how many, how many skills do I have on my bar? <laughs> I'm wife feel like i know more about some of these things than you Blake. i haven't played the game <laughs> anyway you just go you just swing whip and kill monsters <laughs> yeah oh uh, what was i gonna say uh it was uh skill number oh skills. yeah so um you basically have enough skill points to unlock more skills than you'd be able to use mm -hmm. um and then you kind of find yourself trying to find places to sink points because you can put up to five points into a skill to increase its damage yep but after the first point, like the very, very minor, like one or two percent damage yeah. increases. Uh, so I found myself not doing that at all. And you've you've got the the other, I guess, passives for that skill that um that supports it, right? Like you can put points in that, but you yes, can only. But put... there's only uh, there's one node behind it. Yeah. That you don't make a decision on, and then there's two nodes behind that, and you get to pick one of them. Yeah. So that's three points to get probably everything you <laughs> wanted to get out of the skill. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like by the time you've unlocked the, the full skill tree, you kind of have a build that you want. And then mm. after that, in act, in whatever act two or three or however many acts they're going to be, what are you doing with new skill points? Well, like that's. An... Or do you even get new skill points? Um, I don't, so I don't know. If, we, if we look back at like Diablo Immortal, there was no skill point system. There wasn't even like a like a stat point system, you just unlocked and automatically leveled up yeah. skills. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, and they slowly introduced some customization aspects through mm. gems mm. and then through those, like, I forget what they're called. They're like little little skill-modifying tokens. But they weren't, like, skill-modifying in a great way. It was, like, a little extra damage on this skill. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I've forgotten that. <laughs> like charms or something like that. Oh, uh, like, yeah. I do remember charms. It was, like, charms, it was a random class's random yeah. skill does more damage. And uh, that was, I think, the intended chase, where it was like, you're not likely to get a bunch of your class skills on here. <laughs> 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 um, let me ask you a question. When you're running around the world, do you see other players? Yes. yes. That sounds terrible. 
Now, they're, they're well, normal ways, let, me, let me back up a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of the lore, are they referring to there being lots of other people running around? Um, or is it always, in, is, it, is, it, is it like, you're the, you're the savior? You're not the savior. Like, okay. I don't get the, I mean, I haven't gone all the way through the, the campaign, so. I don't think it's alluded to you being like the chosen one. Yeah, which I... I could be wrong, but... I do like. At, at the start, too, it's very much, you're not a chosen one. You're just some person. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm a little more on board with that. But the thing that really bothered me about Immortal was, like, you're meant to be this, like, super savior dude, and there's, like, 40 dudes yep. running around yeah. in the same area doing the same thing. I mean, that's, thing. The, that's the MMO problem as well. Yes. Like, you know, you're the, you're the savior, and there's, but like... But at yeah. least in the MMOs, you're often starting off as a grunt. Yep. And, and yep. at least uh, for a lot of MMOs, they kind of embrace the fact that you're actually not the, the savior. Mm. You're one of many saviors. Yeah. You know, it's like you and all your friends save yeah. the world. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, Diablo's had Diablo, multiplayer since like Diablo 1, though. It has. It has. But, but it's, not like it's this. never, it's never, no. it's always been yeah. opt in. Yeah. Yeah. And this... it's, it's always um, made the fact that it's, it's like limited to, you know, up to five people or whatever. Um, and and you're you're the only ones running around makes the world which is very hostile feel isolated and you you have that though but the the multiplayer aspect of it out in the in the world yeah. is like phasing in and out yeah see I I just don't so it's like it's that. it's around you'll encounter these events out in the world yeah. which those can you can have other players show up or you can like walk walk into it and a player is in the middle of fighting something and you can join in yeah um. But then once once you leave that sort of vicinity, like you don't see any other players. Okay. Except, uh, except for only, it's only around events. You you don't see other players just in the wild. I've definitely seen other players just in the wild. I've like, only I... ever seen other players in the wild near events. Oh, like there's almost always an event near. nearby. Either way, I kind of or don't... or like a quest, like a side quest thing, uh, like a like a side quest. Um, um, like some some monster that you got to kill or something. Mm. That that's another time where I've seen other players around, yeah. but it's always been around some sort of point like that. It's never just been like in the absolute wild where there's nothing around. I don't know. I mean, you know, and certainly not in dungeons. Never in dungeons. No, I've never seen anyone else in a dungeon. Yeah. Um, the instancing thing is kind of weird. Like, obviously, it's open beta, so, uh, closed slash open beta. Um, so they are like working through. Mm some performance things with just a massive flood of people, which is to be expected. Yep. Like, yeah. And I think they've actually done quite well, but you do notice uh, they're doing like seamless instances where you run through an area and then it puts you into a different instance. Mm. Um, How seamless was it for you? Yeah. So you get rubber banded <laughs> if, if one of the instances was uh, not loading. Right. There was um, a point last night where the main town, there's a um, Eastern exit. Mm. I could, it was like an invisible wall. I couldn't go yeah. past it. Sometimes you got to run back and then run back out. It was, I, I and the, the crazy thing no. was I was playing on, um, what is it? The first, first tier, right? Easiest. Mm. And then you can switch. Um, you can go to the statue in town and you can switch to the, oh. the next tier. So I, yep. and so I'd done that. And only on that tier was I encountering this invisible wall. Ah, uh, yeah. Huh. Um, the thing that I was getting at though, was that if, that whole area is a new instance, then it's likely everyone's loading into the same in instances there. So yeah. you might just happen to be not bumping into people. Right. Because maybe I, yeah. Given where those rubber banding things happen, it was always yeah. at like a path going into an area. I, I will say I've never seen a player fade out, you know, like you might expect from a, a system that yeah. I'm, describing yeah. i should next time i play i'm just gonna follow a player and, yeah, and just, see what happens just chase them <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i would not be surprised if there's like a hundred player world limit or something yeah like that. and they don't fade out because they're permanently there mm. and you don't generally see them because they're fairly spread out and the world yeah. large enough to support i that. suppose but, mm, yeah I, but i will i would personally find it immersion breaking to just start bumping into people in my Diablo experience. Well, Although it really depends on how they framed the narrative. Most most of the time it's fine. Like the the narrative is like it's it's pretty um it's pretty 
what would you say? Like, what's the opposite of like chosen one? It's pretty low, you know. Low fantasy. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you don't you don't feel like you're the only one that can do this or yeah. whatever. Like, so seeing other people doing the same thing, you just feel like you're yeah one person in this world. Um, yeah. So okay, I don't know. It 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 might be okay later on in the story. I don't know if you. If it's become like, the chosen one. Become the chosen one, <laughs> and then it's going to be weird. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it might look, it might be fine. Mm. I, it just feels very, it runs to me contrary to the Diablo yeah, aesthetic yeah, and yeah. the Diablo like intent of the world is in ruins it, and everything's. It, it definitely is more fun when there's uh, no players around. <laughs> yeah. I also want to just kite a whole bunch of enemies into me because he was just running through. <laughs> and they just oh boy. stopped focusing him, turned to me, and there oh, was like no. a bunch of freeze dudes, and I just got frozen and just died. Oh, I was no. like, oh. Thanks, guy. <laughs> Do they have hardcore mode? Yes. Okay. So that that's interesting. Mm, yeah, actually that is hardcore a... mode yeah, yeah, in yeah. a multiplayer yeah. thing. Okay. Um Oh my god. That I wonder uh how they're gonna handle that. Mm. <laughs> Because it sounds like you can just straight up grief people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, It'd be interesting if like there was a PvP like serve like like there's mode PvP where you can just... areas I believe ah. I haven't found any yet but it did there was uh, saw something about it. Okay. PvP was a big point of contention in Diablo Immortal because people oh, were yeah. very yeah, very excited very for it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there someone was telling me that uh there's there's a player in Diablo Immortal that has spent so much money that they just outrank everyone else and so he cannot find a match for PvP. <laughs> now, that happens in a lot of competitive games. It doesn't I mean it he probably can. It probably just takes a long time. Maybe. Um I mean I I don't know what their underlying matchmaking system I, I, works like, but we've we've had matchmaking yeah. systems on Path of Exile. But that's and, that's like a skill based thing, like in 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 other games that have that sort of um, matching, right? Yeah. It's like it's it's skill or yes. tier based or whatever. Yeah. This is just you bought your way to the top, and now you have no one to play with. Uh, but I would presume that it's there's some sort of underlying matchmaking that doesn't rely on how much you spent or how how what yeah, but your level is. Just, yeah, but okay, yeah. So at first he would have had a bunch of matches, be, but yes. as soon as because his gear as, just as overpowers he, everyone else, he would have just like face rolled through it all yes. and then easily waltzed his way to the top of the. <laughs> yes, of and now, the now it probably takes an hour for him to find it. Yeah, yeah. But and this, it'll have to be with somebody else who also waltzed their way to the top of the ladder, and it's just not like. Necessi- which really depends on how their matchmaking system works. Yeah. It could yeah. be that it is just checking for your like win to loss ratio and, and or, or your yeah. ELO rating or whatever, some sort of thing that is an extrapolation of your act- actual matches played and not. I'll look at your gear score. Yeah. On the other hand, it might just be looking at your gear score. I suspect it probably doesn't look at your gear score because they probably want high spending players yeah. fighting yeah, yeah, non spending yeah. players. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. feeling great about I think it. it. I think it yeah. I mean I I don't know. I'm just speculating, but it probably is um win loss. It's not it wouldn't be gear rated. Yeah. So in that case, I mean this happens in like League of Legends mm. and other competitive games with like ELO ratings or whatever, where you get to a point where uh it just takes a very long time to yeah. find other players because there's just so few people in that similar yeah, yeah. score bracket. I get and it. So, it's just the thing with um, Immortal is that is you, you can paid just, to get you there. Can just yeah. pay to get yeah. there. Which is... Yeah. But it was just kind of a weird irony to have paid so much money that you no longer can play the thing <laughs> you want to play. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but yeah. that's the system they built. And good for them. Yep. Well, I mean, I it's, guess it it's, works it's, in that that guy paid that much money. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably mm-hmm. fueling uh, Diablo Four. So <laughs> um, I yeah. mean, that's great. Um, I remember reading about you know the, there was like those gems that you had to rank up. Yeah. And um, at some point, if you like max them out, yeah, you you can there's like a whole other subsystem of progression. Oh god. Like the gems open up slots or something like that and you can put more gems in them i don't remember it was it was bizarre it was like no one even knew about this the secondary progression system because it was it took like one hundred twenty thousand dollars. oh average my god to, yeah. yeah to reach oh it oh my god that's insane yeah so um let me ask you this yeah uh so far playing the d4 beta will you buy it 
Oh, you you already have. Well, I already it, have because right? I, yeah, I bought the yeah. Yeah. Um, Why? Well, here's like it is. Is it research? Is it is it is it both. pleasure? It's both because like I have played Diablo one, two, and three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always I loved Diablo two. Like it was great. Yeah. And. And like still it's, chasing it's, that it's dragon. Just, yeah, still chasing that dragon, but also, you know, a bit of research as well. Yeah. You know, and it's it's just cool to see I don't know, it's just it's it's just um Yeah, I, it's it just seems like it was a given. Like I was of course I was gonna buy it. Like enough. A, Yeah, that's that's the case for me as well. Yeah. Like, I can't claim research or anything. Really. Yeah. I just there's a new Diablo game. I'm going to play the new Diablo game. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, I, I grew up playing Diablo. I played it. Sure. Diablo one when yeah. I was like thirteen or something, and did you grow up playing Sonic? Yes. Did but... you do you buy every Sonic game? <laughs> no, but I never, didn't play anywhere near as much Sonic. Yeah. I see. See, you must. What's the that game for you that you grew up playing is every it time? Zelda? They, yeah, it's probably Zelda. <laughs> I don't think it is Zelda because I I only really got into Zelda in my like adult years. Right. Um, like I I had them my brother bought them and i was always kind of banned from playing them oh really but, well okay i was the little brother who would beat games before the big brother oh, no. bought them, <laughs> if if given the chance yeah and um uh and it i i was often put into a holding pattern because my brother tended to play through games very slowly mm. and often would never finish them oh yeah um and so i would i would have to always stay behind his progression yeah yeah um, and, like, the best example of this was he bought, like, Final Fantasy VII on the PC. Oh, uh, yeah. And he got, I don't know, up to, like, you know the big cannon city mm. in Final Fantasy VII? Yep. Um, on that first continent? Yep. Yep. Uh, I think he got up to there, maybe a little bit past there, and I wasn't allowed to progress past there. And I was just grinding <laughs> oh, my God. in that area. Yeah, and, yes. and breeding chocobos. Oh, my God. And, um... I think I was like level 30 or 40 <laughs> in, in a level 20 area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before I was just like, he said, fine, go ahead, beat it. <laughs> so, and then I play the rest of the game. But um, this was a common trend. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so uh, Zelda's. Yeah. He, he generally would beat Zelda games, but it would just take a really long time. Hmm. Um, but what is, so what is that game for you now that if they released a new version, you would just, Say I'm buying it without even thinking. I don't know that there is one. Uh, um, Elder Scrolls. I'll wait and see how Elder Scrolls Six is looking. Hmm. Um, uh, I should say that I would also buy any Final Fantasy game <laughs> if they're like main series. Any, and I've been like burnt on those a bunch of times. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's my thing. Is like I've, I've yeah. been burnt as well, <laughs> and I've so I've broken that habit where yeah. it's like I don't tend to auto buy. I'd say maybe the 3D Mario games. Okay. Are, are probably about as close as yeah as it gets to an auto buy, and that's just because like they have never put a foot wrong. They've always been amazing, kind of groundbreaking platformer experiences. Mm. Uh, mm. Other than that, I <laughs> genuinely can't think of them. I probably have a couple games like uh, StarCraft. If they put out a new StarCraft, I would auto buy it. <laughs> no, nah, I don't. Not for me. StarCraft was like I, I guess it's all just like. What did you play a lot as did a you... kid? And like StarCraft was StarCraft and Diablo were around the same time. Sure. And did I you... just I played them like constantly. Did you buy all of the StarCraft expansions for StarCraft? Actually, 2? here's the thing. StarCraft uh-huh. 2, I didn't. Uh-huh. I got bored of it. That's sort of my this is what I'm I'm getting at, I guess. Yeah. Is like um But a I... lot of the games that you remember mm. are very different to the games of but also the thing is, like, I so I pl- I played a lot of Diablo two, but I also never finished it because I got bored of it. And then Diablo three, I also never finished that because I got bored of it. You never finished Diablo two or three, no. and yet you instantly bought Diablo yep. four. <laughs> so so <laughs> take me through that thought. Maybe process. this is the one I'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let me let me understand. You buy uh, early access games, which they themselves yeah, are not <laughs> finished. Oftentimes, the creators get bored and don't finish it. And then you are also auto-buying games that you haven't finished because you get bored of them. Yeah, but this is this is a general... I think we have talked about this is a general thing for me where I don't finish games because I, I get to a point where I, like, I feel like I've won and I, I feel like I've gotten everything <laughs> yeah, out so of it. You, you do play games. Uh, you, you often, will, if given the chance, will set a game up 
<laughs> to so never it, end. So it can't be finished. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, I guess, in line. I mean, Dark Souls, right? <laughs> a Dark Souls is probably an auto buy for me. But I've also never finished a Dark Souls game. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, think you need to finish games, though. You finished Zelda. Yeah. What was, what was the last game? Zelda. Um, poor shame, first of all. <laughs> and second of all, shame on you. Um, uh, what is the last game you finished, Blake? Mm. Maybe it was Zelda. I'm trying wow. to think of, like, what, what games have I played since Let, then? When, name, was, when name, did I finish Zelda? any other game besides Zelda that you finished in the last, like, two or three years. Um... I finished Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. I finished the God of War, the yep. last one. Not the, Ragnarok? Yep. No, no. Oh, the, the one before. God of War. Yeah, yeah. The one from, uh, from uh, like, 2016 or something? That one. <laughs> the, the Okay, so not... Not the, not not God the of War. current one. Not God of War, but God of War. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. The God I, of War? I hate that name, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I hate yeah. that name. Um, okay, yeah. Um, Fair enough. What else have I finished? So I you, finished. Those, I finished those, like uh, Life is Strange. I finished those. Yep. Um, those didn't. Those didn't bore you. Those were. I like those because they were quick. Uh, Firewatch finished. Yep. That's, okay. Th- these are all like four hour experiences. But, but God yeah. of War wasn't right. No. And neither was Horizon Zero Dawn. No. But the what kept you going through those? The story. Okay. Oh, um, Jedi. Uh, Fallen Order. Fallen Order. Finished uh-huh. that. And also, that's a game where it was only the story keeping me going because I hated the the combat. Okay. okay. <laughs> so and you I'm, really I'm going to buy the next story. one knowing oh, that I'm going to no. hate the combat. Why? <laughs> Why? I like of Star the... Wars, man. I'm into Star Wars now. And they've never put a foot wrong. Am I right, guys? <laughs> only good products coming out of the Star Wars license. <laughs> only good products and good movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think I've played a sequel Star Wars game. <laughs> I, got, I haven't seen most of the movies. Either. I got so into during the pandemic, right? Yeah, um, I never saw the last Star Wars movie. Oh, really? Ah, yeah. oh, you're not missing anything. Exactly. This is what. I, <laughs> but this is kind of my point. Is like, I I I find it interesting that yeah. you are you are um, strongly attached to these uh, uh, IPs. Yeah, yeah, series or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That that have failed you in the past, <laughs> yep. and and yet you and yet I you keep buying them. Insist on buying them, and I have uh, I've broken that habit, mm. um, and perhaps to a uh, too great a degree. Yeah, where it's just like I've kind of tuned them out almost. Um, Paul, yo, uh, do you finish games? Mm, for the most part, no. Okay, what was the last game you finished? I was trying to think of that. Um. I know I finished the first Horizon. Uh, and like I've done things like gotten through a couple of boss cells and dead cells where you're just yep. increasing difficulty yep. each yep. time. I, I would um, consider those finished. In that case, I've done that with. Like, you feel like you've won? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, he's I beaten the never, boss. <laughs> um, so he's won. He has won. So he's actually won. Into Blake. the dungeon, I. <laughs> Are you familiar with the format of Into the Gungeon? Um, I know that there's a gun that shoots other guns. There is? Yeah. That's the only you are thing. a gun that shoots other guns. Well, oh, wow. You can shoot guns. Uh, okay. No, sorry. You're a bullet. Oh, um, what? You're a bullet that shoots guns? Yeah. Holy. <laughs> um, but the, what I was going to say is uh, Into the Gungeon, I've played hundreds of hours of. Mm. I've beaten the final boss like six or seven times. Yeah. But there's a sequence afterwards. Where it strips away all your upgrades and uh-huh. you play through a little story bit for that character mm. in order to unlock that character's past. Mm. And I have never done that. Mm. Like hundreds of hours of this is game. It, wow. it's like one of my most highly highly rated games. Yeah. Is it because that part is too much of a like change up of what you were yeah. used to? And yeah. I just choke. I choke every time. Ah. Mm. Yeah, the pressure's on. Interesting. So kind of beaten that? Yeah, I was just kind of beaten. not. Mm. Like I think if you beat the boss, did you did you see a credit screen? No, no, oh. you did, you've got to like you've got to mm. the entire storyline okay. is to kill the past, and you kill gotcha. the big dragon at the end, and then mm. you go through the portal, and you've got to do like this little side. Interesting. Bit. So you haven't beaten it? No, don't oh. think so. Oh wow. Well, mm. I feel bad for both of you. You gotta you gotta beat your games. Maybe but story <laughs> games I mostly don't finish. Yeah. I so it seems to me Blake that the thing that tends to drive you to the end of a game is the story. 
Yeah. When one exists and is compelling. Yep. Yep. Um, otherwise, you will just play something aimlessly until you're bored of it. Yep. Pretty much. Interesting. Um, so Diablo, you like the story so far. Do you think you'll finish it? I actually haven't. Uh, oh, I mean, that's that's the question, right? Yeah. Do I think I'll finish it? That that yes, that was the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the question. Yep. Yeah. Correct. That, that is a question. That is the question. Yep. Um, I'll I'll be realistic and say probably not. Paul, do you think you'll beat it? I will almost certainly finish that game. Yeah. Um, but I, I doubt I'll be playing it a month after its release. I expected oh. I would beat Immortal. And I never did because uh, I got bored. <laughs> uh, after that last episode where we talked yeah. about Immortal, where I was like, oh, I'm definitely still going to play it. Yeah. Same Me thing. and Blake yeah. added each other as friends. Yeah. And then I proceeded to never play that game again. Yep. Yeah. Same. I don't think I ever played it after that either. <laughs> um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, Paul, you mentioned you've been playing uh, a game called Big Ambition. Big Ambitions. Ambitions. Sorry. Yep. So Tell me about it. It's a it's an early access game. Yep. You know how I was talking about how like, I wanted like a. Um, I've already pockets. bought it. <laughs> Wait, have you really? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I Just wanted sort of like list. a casual game where you like build something. Okay. This is like a. You build businesses in a city. Oh. And you've got to like micromanage all the like. So you start out and it's like. Someone in your family's just died and your uncle calls you and he's like, hey, go to the bank and get a loan. Yeah. And then, hey, I'll give you a car. And then you like... Wait, 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 wait. Your uncle dies. And uh, then someone calls you and tells you to get a loan and you're like, okay. Someone in your family dies just to tell and your uncle call tells you, you to, <laughs> okay. to go... To go get a loan. Yeah, he's like, it's time to get things in order or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Your, your mother's dead, son. <laughs> I wasn't paying that much Go get attention. a loan. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for you to move out. <laughs> I mean, that might have been it, actually. You're, you're um, an adult now and you need to put away childish things and get a bank loan. Yeah. yeah and he's like, you have get a mortgage alone. now. Yeah. And he's like, rent this place and you're going to start a gift shop. <laughs> okay. So he's telling you to do this. <laughs> yeah. And then, and you've got to go, you've got to go buy the shelves and you place them in the, the store. And then oh, you, what? Wow. You go and buy cheap gifts and then yep. you put them on the shelves and this then you buy great. a till. So it's, it's real like small serving. business simulator. At the start, yeah. Oh, it sounds yeah. And then like it's like, them. okay, so get some employees. Yeah. Mm. And then you train your employees up, and then you have them man the till, and then yep. you're like, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, well now I need expensive jewelry, and you've got to like, then, oh, not jewelry gifts, and then so you've got to like make sure that you're always picking up and delivering enough of the uh, gifts, and yep. then yeah. you end up. Um, this... getting people to do that and then you go buy another shop I and you, honestly you really sounds, like the sound of this exactly <laughs> like my kind of game so there is a game from I think it was about year 2000 or so mm. it was called Monopoly uh, oh right yeah 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 I've heard of this really yeah it was it yeah. was Transformer themed right I've, I've or Harry Potter themed. No, or, uh, no, no. <laughs> or uh, no, here's the thing. Or it Marvel was, themed, right? It was, it, was, it was licensed off of, it was a licensed PC game. So it was like based on the board game, except that it was nothing like the board oh, game. Oh, what? Really? It was nothing like the board game. Oh. It was, you'd have city blocks and you would buy properties. Yeah. Um, it was like no dice rolling or anything. It was just like you had money. Mm. You, you yeah. bought a property and then you decide what you build on that property. And there are lots of little citizens running around. And they they all have their wants and desires and dislikes. Oh my god! Yeah. And they have their agenda for the day, and they have like age ranges, and they have schedules, and they will uh, either go on your property and spend money or not. And it's about like establishing, growing businesses, and, and like being oh a, wow. being a badass landlord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is that, but without you can't see the people all running around, but you mm. can see like graphs of how desirable your shop is to go into. Yeah. And, <sighs> So you're watching, you you're watching you're graphs going, go up I, yeah, and the numbers want, go up. Oh, oh and, man. and then like you yeah, can I want little hire meeples. an HR person. <laughs> oh then, my god! And you get them to help manage your employees, and you get like a logistics operator, and you oh start like god. trying to make sure that you're because initially, <sighs> after you, when you realize you don't have enough time to do the deliveries yourself, yep, you got to go get like a delivery driver, and then that start making great. sure. Dude, I really great. am into this, <laughs> but I I want to see the people. That's the thing. I want to see the people coming into my shop. You see the people in the shop. Okay. You just don't see them running. Oh, no, you do see them running. You see people running around outside, but they don't have, like, wants or desires. Or okay. It's just okay. like a world. Mm. This, I, I, I've been craving. I, I have this itch for that Monopoly game that has not been scratched in a very long time. 
I think after even, this podcast, I'm going to show you this game because it's, yeah. it's incredible. Um, it was like Infogrames before they went under. Mm. Um, and so this sounds right up my alley. How much was it? 30 bucks, New Zealand. And it's early access? It is early access. Okay. Um, they have recently had an update. They also have like an update schedule where it's yeah. like you open the game and it's like 59 days until the next patch kind of thing. Oh, it's really? Like hey, a, that's really, really good. Developer timeline and stuff. Uh, and also what's in the game now, I've probably played like 10, 15 hours of. Um, it's got... The early access part is that it seems like they're going to make the city like four times larger. Oh, wow. And currently you only have like this one part of the city. Mm -hmm. But the one part of the city that you've got is like enough for a game. Oh, wow. Nice. Like, I, I, so can you, can you like, um, like start other franchises as well? Of yep. your so like and you need to hire people to manage all that and yep. it's just and then you and just you become just this like and, and you can wow. even eventually like instead of renting the buildings buy the buildings mm. you can just straight send outright purchase offers for existing businesses and stuff oh my god so i'm guessing the end game of the game is to own the city yep oh my god very monopoly mm. um i i really like it yeah. it sounds great i'm keen i would just yeah just immediately hooked <laughs> yeah it's um the, as far as the early access side of things goes, there are some like weird UI things mm. and some things that are annoying. Mm -hmm. But I think some of the things that are annoying are meant to be <laughs> like um, taxes. It's just a loud <laughs> buzzing yeah. when it, whenever you log in, it's like, <laughs> and it doesn't stop. No, well, so like, um, you make money per day kind of thing, mm. and then, um, sometimes you're like trying to hire a new person, you need to train them up. Training happens per day, mm -hmm. so. There's no way to just like fast forward time. What you've got to do is you've got to go sleep. Yeah. And you can sleep for uh, up okay. to 24 hours. Oh, wow. Um, but then like your character will get hungry and stuff. Mm. But Oh, wow. There's like that <laughs> level of stuff as well. Yeah, because what? I mean, you, you can run into any one of those shops and like man the till and your character, your dude can be <laughs> He's tired. walking to... <laughs> yeah, your dude can be hungry. Like, can you imagine out of my that? way. <laughs> can you imagine that if Jeff Bezos just walks into an Amazon <laughs> store and is like, get out of my way, I'm man. Hang on, hang on. Like, like. In what universe does Amazon have stores? Well, you know, they have the fulfillment centers. <laughs> <laughs> just walks in and starts driving a forklift around. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Or controlling the robots. <laughs> <laughs> forklift. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can, though. You go buy a truck, you could go pick up the goods from one place and That's deliver amazing. them at another place, and That's then you're the delivery driver. Wow. Okay. Well, it sounds like I'm going to be buying this. <laughs> um, I, I, want, we're, I want to quickly talk about a game I've been playing. Mm -hmm. uh, Prey. Yeah, uh, which, which yeah. like uh, spelled P R A Y, but it's not. It's P R E Y. Is that a type of spelling? Pray though. P R A Y. Yeah, yeah, that's prayer. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Yeah, um, but you also spelled big ambition as big ambi sound. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess I should it's, be you know what? thankful that you didn't <laughs> screw it up more. It's it it doesn't pop up as a spelling mistake though. <laughs> uh, I guess so, not. So there you go. A shortening of ambient sounds. Ambit sound, huh? Um, so pray. Have you guys played it? No. No. Uh, do you know anything I, about I it? I know a little bit about it. That there's a like shapeshifter things. Is that? Or is this a different? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, it's uh, it's like um, I guess the term is immersive sim. Okay. Do you know what that is? Tell me. It's uh, did you ever play like Deus Ex, the original? Yeah. Not not human revolution. No, I, I I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know how it's like you have like lots of different skill options and lots of different items and all mm. these things and um and lots of ways to approach a problem. Is it uh and, and is all Hitman, of them are valid? Is Hitman in that I'm kind of vein? I'm not sure. I haven't I've never actually played a Hitman okay. game. But it's um it's the sort of game where you know, you have to get through a, you have to get into a different room, mm. say. And um you could pick the lock on the door or yep. you could find a key card or you could um, kill someone who has a key card or you could just follow someone through the door mm. like, stealthily or maybe there's a vent mm. that you can crawl in through or you can break the window or you can blow up the wall there's, and there's, lot, like, there's lots of things yeah. there's all, all of the, and all of these options are considered yep. valid and is um, it a is it a like actually does it feel like an actual living world where, where like NPCs are doing things and not just sort of like in prey, not, around not, not, to not necessarily. No, okay. um, because it's, um, it's kind of a horror, it's got a horror vibe. And mm. so you're generally alone. Okay. Um, in prey, you, um, it's got a, a really great intro. I don't really want to spoil it, mm. but, um, once you get into the meat of the game, 
you're in uh, essentially an abandoned space station, mm -hmm. um, and lots of people are dead, and there are these aliens called typhoids. Right. Or typhons? Typhons. Because um, typhoid is a disease. <laughs> typhons. And um, they come in different shapes and sizes, and, and one type of them is mimic, mm. and mimics will look like a nearby object. Yep. Which makes it really terrifying. Quite, quite scary to be leaving a room <laughs> yeah. because you can be trying to pick up something and it's actually going to bite your face. Off. Oh my god! Um, but the game is really I've been I've been playing it. It came out in 2017. Mm. Really, it's a good time. It had I don't know the full story, but it had an interesting development cycle, right? Where it's basically because there was a E3 demo of it years and years ago. And then when the game actually, and then after that, there was nothing about it. And then when the game actually came out, completely different game. Yes. There's a good reason for that. So um, there was a game called Prey, mm. the same name, mm -hmm. came out in, I think, 2007. Yeah. Uh, and it's about um, uh, like a, a Native American guy who gets uh, abducted by aliens. Mm. And it's got like some early portal tech stuff and like. I played that one. Yeah. Um, and then they started working on a sequel. That developer started working on a sequel called Prey 2. Mm. Um, I got to see a demo of Prey 2 oh, yeah. when I was working at IGN ah. um, in 2012. And then in 2014, I think they showed something at E3. Yep. And then they canceled it. Yeah. Oh. And it was it was it was one that um, everyone was talking about at the E3 as well. Yeah. I remember that was like one of the big. The vertical slice things. was really impressive, but apparently they just couldn't get the rest of the game. Yeah, up to that level. it did look quite ambitious what they know. were like proposing. Yeah, so um, this game is uh, done by Arcane Studios. Oh yeah. Um, so they did um, Dishonored. Dishonored. Yeah. They did uh, Deathloop. All right. All oh, right. Um, there's a game called Redfall that's coming out. That hmm. They're doing. Was Deathloop any good? I don't know. I never played it. Yeah, I, I never remember played seeing it something I've about it being of... super excited, and yeah. then. By the time the game came out, I'd kind of forgotten about it, and then I didn't buy it. Mm. Apparently, it's great, but uh, I haven't played it. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, Bethesda owns the rights to Prey. They inherited the rights after all these developers oh, yeah. went out of business, yeah. and uh, Arcane Studios was developing this game, mm. and Bethesda is the publisher, and they said, you're going to call your game Prey. That's so weird. And they said, what? <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Prey. And they're like, we don't care. You're calling it That's Prey. That's so weird. <laughs> it's, we're going we're gonna to brand it as a reboot. And it's a and apparently the developers had to publicly be like on board. Yeah. But privately, privately were not on board. That's and then so after weird. the fact, we're like, we really don't like. Yeah. That. We feel bad because people who played the original play Prey. Yeah. Um, came into this expecting, the, like one thing, and if they, if they loved it, they yeah. were like disappointed because it has nothing to do with that Prey. Yeah. And if they didn't like the original Prey, they didn't get our game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was they're kind of damned either way. Anyway, um. I've been playing it. I'm really, really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a lot of like Bioshock. Oh, okay. Um, I guess more like System Shock because it's in space. Yep. Um, but I think the thing I really enjoy most about it is how thoroughly designed each mm. level is and each world, like the, the world of it is. Like you go into any room mm. and generally speaking, there's like interesting verticality stuff happening. Like you can crawl along the vents and there's all mm. these secrets to discover and explore. Um, if you there's like an obstacle in your way, there's like, you can, you, let's say there's like a, a, a fuse box that's broken. And yeah. It's zapping everything around it. Yeah. Um, you've got a weapon called the glue gun, which just shoots like solid blobs of glue. Yeah. And you can use that to like temporarily disable the zapping. Okay. Um, and then you can go in and fix it if you want, if you've got the right skill. Yep. Or you can, Look for another way around. You should, mm. uh, there's often like vents above, mm. or maybe uh, maintenance, maintenance access ports on the floor, um, or you can use your glue gun to make like a, a stairway mm. and just climb over it. Oh wow! <laughs> um, there's just is that like like is that a actual skill you have, or is that just something that it's just a the mechanic. game allows you it's to like, kind of do? Like, like you just you just realize, hey, I could make something I can, like, walk on. Yep. Um, oh, wow. So you said for the wires that you could repair them, though, if you had the skill for it. Yeah. What? How do the skills work? So you've got skill trees, hmm. um, and they have costs that are paid in uh, essentially a currency called neuromods. Um, and you find them around the station. Um, yeah. And narratively, there's a reason for that. Um, you don't, like, earn them. 
you you can actually craft some as well. Hmm. Um, and it's kind of an interesting crafting system, which is another thing I really enjoy about this oh. game. So um, pretty much any item you can pick up, and there's lots of different kinds of items you can pick up. You can then break down into raw materials and then build something else out of it. Yeah. Um, at a, like a fabricator. Um, and then there's an item in the game called a Recycler Charge, which is essentially a grenade that will turn anything in its radius into its base components. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, and that includes items you not, can't normally pick up. Yeah. So if there's a oh, shelf or something, right. wow. you can just toss a recycler charge yeah. and turn it into its base components. Whoa. So um, oftentimes you'll find a doorway and it's blocked by like a giant shelf. Um, mm. And uh, one way to get through is to throw a recycler charge. Mm. Another way to get through is to train in like a uh, get get neural mods that allow you to lift heavy things. Yep. Um, or you can like look, look for another ways around. Yeah. Ways around. It's just there's so many ways to approach every problem in this game, mm. and there's so much stuff in every room <laughs> that I spend like <laughs> way too much time scraping every <laughs> single. That's I'm like cool. I'm like I clear the ground floor. Yeah. And then I'm like okay oh I just noticed there's like vents up there so I start doing the vents and then the vents will lead to tunnels and oh, the tunnels wow. will lead to like yep. whole other rooms I haven't seen yet. Um, and then it turns out that like. That actually, that room was connected to the first room in, in some interesting way. And it, then I discovered there's just like straight up secret like entrances and stuff. So like there's a, there's a part in the game. This is one of the, my favorite things about it is like this sort of open ended problem solving. Mm. There's a part in the game where you're watching like a hologram of some scientists talking, mm -hmm. and then um, and, and they give you some vital piece of information. And then there's another video. Um, of, uh, that you can watch of them talking as well, um, and then that one seems to linger for a while, and they have like they haven't turned off the recording. Ah, oh. and um, the scientists walk off, and then I discovered that like you can view this hologram from a few different other angles, like uh -huh. these screens, and you can see that he's actually walked into a different part of the room. Oh wow! And he's like messing with something, and then the door, like the wall, opens up, and there's like all this, all these items in there, and this is all in the hologram. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that. Means I can do that, but you you to, would have to watch that to the end and exactly. then realize it's not the end. Yeah. Not and, just watch and it change the end, your perspective, change my perspective, <sighs> wow. and then then I had to look around the room for the thing that he was manipulating, mm, which yeah. was not in its original spot. Oh, and wow. so, um, and that is so cool. Is that's exactly my yeah. point? It's just like it's there's so much thought put into yeah. um, giving the player the tools they need and and allowing the player to explore. Mm. and figure things out on their own without being told these things yeah yeah um like i could hack into someone's computer uh or i could um just chance upon the fact that their password is stuck to a post-it note underneath the desk or Ooh, under could... the desk that's a new spot instead right. of like right in front exactly. of exactly <laughs> or um as i discovered there's a there was a recording of someone telling someone oh, else yeah. don't put your post-it note under the desk people could find it <laughs> um <laughs> So it was, was just, what is it was um oh, that sounds fantastic it's really it's fantastic there was it's, i think it was like last of us right had a little bit of that but then they always telegraphed like where to find um where to find like codes for doors and stuff yeah. way too much that it just lost any feeling of like uh, of problem solving yeah yeah, yeah of discovery yeah this game does not have that problem oh. and in fact there's lots of things i haven't discovered and i've just sort of hacked my way in um, but there's a lot of things where I like I found a part of the clue, mm. and I haven't found all of the clue. That's cool. And I'm I'm like keeping it in my brain. Yeah. And then like f I'll find the other part I need to put yeah. these things together. I'm like, oh, I know where I know where to go, and I know what to do now. Oh, that's cool. Um, do you find there's does it get overwhelming the number of those things you need to remember? Um, I think without the fact that I could approach these problems in many different ways, it would. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, because, uh. I could just hack into the computer or I could, you know, find some key card somewhere or whatever mm -hmm. it else. Um, I, I can retain that information and, um, and decide whether or not it's like useful later. Like, yeah. uh, I'll be like, Oh, I, okay. Uh, I actually don't care about having that code anymore. Cause I could just hack into that door or, mm. I, um, or I found the key card for it and I just, mm. I, I can forget it. Um, but sometimes I'll just I'll have this piece of information. I'll go looking for the for what I need to finish this puzzle mm. or whatever. Yeah. Do you feel like um, because there's so many different like passages and and things that you do you feel like you have to hundred percent explore? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, and that's 
I think the biggest hang up for me. Yeah. And, and it's a personal hang up. It's oh, not, yeah. It's not a cause of it's not because of the game. It's just I want to open up. Yeah, you want to you want to experience everything. Yeah. I had the same thing with um, Dishonored. Yeah. Like you could just go through and do the objective. Yeah. But I would always feel like I have to hundred percent explore yeah. the entire area yeah. to get to to, to, feel, to feel everything. Like you can move on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm really like I do that a lot in games as well, especially in like all the old Final Fantasies. I would just go around checking every bin, mm. talking to every person. Yeah, yeah. I remember I used to have nightmares as a kid <laughs> of uh, these cons like just walls going past me and past and it was all from like Wolfenstein because I, oh, really? I used to run along the walls yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar on every oh, wall God. to see if it would uh, open yeah. you used and to have nightmares is, of yeah, yeah. walls passing you by like yes that. that's because, amazing because I would just get like lost in this maze yeah. of like trying to open <laughs> there's got to um, be a secret there's, somewhere there's got to be a yep. secret yeah. eventually yep. and eventually there was which just reinforces you yeah. to go I think um, I mean Dark Souls has this as well yeah. right where you just hit every wall <laughs> that you think it's once you know that there's a wall that you've got to hit and 70 it, times it doesn't oh, help boy. that everybody puts messages in front of every wall yeah. saying yeah. secret ahead yes yeah. uh I think you guys would enjoy Prey. It doesn't quite get to that level. Yeah. But there are secrets that uh, I only discovered well after the fact oh. that I have to go back and yeah. find. <laughs> um, but they, they signal all these things really mm. well. It, it gives you enough to go on the trail, and, yeah. but doesn't spell it out. Okay. Um, and that's really satisfying. That's cool. Um, that, that game, like, um, talking about the name, I think it did suffer. Oh, it absolutely did. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. The... The skill tree stuff is also really interesting. Like, there's a whole the whole Neuromod thing. Hmm. Um, because at some point, you get access to alien powers. Yep. And you have to make a choice. You, you can you can start going down the, essentially down the alien skill tree hmm. really hard if you want. Yeah, yeah. But there are, like, turrets around the space station that are designed to detect alien Oh, no. Uh, so if you go to alien, yeah, yeah. then they'll start turning on you. Oh, and so there's, there's, there's just lots of consequences to your actions. Yeah. And... I, there was a quest I did where there was a, was a human involved, and I felt like this guy was sketchy, mm. and I could have killed him when I had the chance, yep. but I didn't, and it, you it spiraled right. into a completely different quest. Oh, whoa. Um, so there's just, there's just lots of, of cool stuff going. Wow. Yeah, that sounds really good. It yeah. sounds like... Um... Because like what you're describing sounds a lot like what was in Dishonored. Yeah, it, but it just sounds like this is like stepped up and stepped then in up. space. Yeah, yeah. And all, there's also a lot of zero G stuff. Oh, which wow. is really like fun and interesting. Yeah, you you can go outside the space station and like ah uh, yeah explore <laughs> explore the, space explore space. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there's a lot going on. Wow, cool. <laughs> it's really good. I, I, you convinced me. I'm gonna buy this. Did you say it was on special? Uh, I got or was. it and two expansions for Ooh. seventeen dollars. Oh, cool! I didn't even know there was expansions for it. Yeah, uh, one of them I think might be specific to VR, which I don't have. But uh, I've got the expansion. Now. Can you play that game in VR? Then? I have no idea. I don't. I don't would know you think it, it would be good? I don't in VR? care. <laughs> I mean, I've got VR. I'm just. I'm. I've got VR, VR that I haven't used in like months. You could probably play it in VR. There's. Do you think someone would want to play it in VR? I've been enjoying it. Like, would would it be enhanced in VR in any way? Like, I can't make that judgment call for you. <laughs> Should I play it in VR? <laughs> you can try. All right, I'm gonna play. Why not in, try it? I'm gonna play it in VR and then yeah. tell you um, that you know the zero G made me throw up or something. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, which it might because it's like it's full on like oh. any angle, yep. any any trajectory. Oh. Um, and it's, a lot of it is outside of the space station, but some of it is inside of the space station, mm. and that's real fun. Yeah. Anyway, great game. I'm stoked to play more of it. I'm going to finish it. Whoa. Because I finish games, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, cool. I still can't think of like a game recently that I finished. <laughs> oh, I've been I, thinking. I, none of mine were like that recent. Oh, I finished um, every round of Super Auto Bits. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that, that, that have you maxed right? out every animal? No. Yeah. No, I haven't. Um, so we've got some questions. We never a answer questions. Let's answer some questions. How about that? Okay. Do it. We're, we're pretty much out of time, but let's answer some questions. This is from Slippery Jim 8 This is not really a question. This is more of a comment. Just said, I too found Red Dead a little too boring. Very much enjoyed the Bannerlord banter. Cheer. Mm, that was months ago. I put that in there because, wow, someone who uh, wasn't into Red Dead. Yep. You know? Yep. That's actually another game I suspect has some of that immersive sim. 
Oh yeah, it really like. does. Um, so I might have to get it back into yeah. Reddit at some point, but it's just very slow. Get back into Reddit. That's another game I never finished. <laughs> uh, Blake, <laughs> this is from Fuwasan. Yeah. Have you ever reconsidered trying Dwarf Fortress? The Steam version is much more new player friendly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That I have might be thought of, I have <laughs> yeah, I have thought about that game because that's the like granddaddy of all these like village management yeah. sims that I'm always playing. It's extremely, extremely deep. Yeah, yeah. Um I should try it, but like honestly, um originally the graphics just put me off because I didn't like the yeah. ASCII stuff. Yeah. Um but I haven't Oh, well, take a look at the Steam version. Yeah, I haven't seen the Steam version. And this is from uh, the last question. Aiden Sichi, glad to see you guys like Doom Eternal. The weapon swapping has even more uses than enemy weaknesses. Nick mentioned that guns like the shotgun have a little animation after each shot. Weapon swapping bypasses that animation and even bypasses cooldowns like the sniper scope. So you can put out a huge amount of damage by doing something like rocket, swap to machine guns, sniper scope, swap back to rocket. Um, uh, I did actually know about this because the game specifically tells you this. Oh, really? It does. And I hate it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Because... It, uh, this is an example of, I, th I think, uh, the developer adopting a mechanic from a previous game. Mm. So like, I suspect in like one of the dooms, this, or, or in some other id game or in, in, in games in general, yeah, weapon swapping is faster than reloading. I, yeah. I think it happens in Counter-Strike, for example. Yeah. It the, feels, it feels like a, um, competitive, yes. like, like, uh, technique, you yes. know? In... But, and, and I like when. I, often I like when a developer adopts something like that, but in this case, it to me it like breaks the fantasy mm. a bit. Like, picture uh, from a an outside perspective, what's happening when the Doom guy fires off his shotgun, and then swaps to his rocket launcher, and then swaps back to his shotgun, mm. and his shotgun's loaded. The bullets were in his pocket. <laughs> he put the shotgun in his pocket. Put yeah. the bullets shotgun in his pocket. In. Uh, open yeah. Yeah. first, yeah, 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 and then he yeah. has all these holsters for his weapons that just auto, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. auto reload when he, um, I, you know, I don't think that's true. <laughs> did you, did you <laughs> and ever? This watch, is why it annoys me. Did you ever watch the, um, the uh, Tomb Raider movies from the two thousands? Because there's a scene in there where she, like, unloads her clips and. Yeah. Puts like she has clips already kind of on her back, like ready to go, and uh -huh. she just puts her hands down, and they they slide into the guns, and then okay. boom, she's got her clips back. Yep, it's sure. that sort of thing. Yeah, except that she, you know, what she didn't do is um, swap to another weapon, put her hands behind her back, pull out a rocket launcher, and then <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> so, yeah, that's fair can enough. you even see all the other weapons on him? No, so hidden somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, there's, there's a lot on, of questions. They're, yeah. they're on in somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there is already like this mystery place where yeah, the weapons yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's fine for that mystery place to reload your weapon. Yeah. I, I guess like my. I would rather this be a mechanic that is specific to some weapons and, and thematically tied into the action you're performing. What if they just didn't tell you this and you just found it out yourself? Would that be okay? That would be a little bit better, I think. I think but, them but, telling you is just kind of like this is something you should be doing. Yeah, I guess and the, it the feels thing is, weird. it tells you is the, the fact that they tell you, but they haven't done anything to skin it in a sensible way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in a way that makes sense in yeah. the universe. That's the biggest problem to me. So I hate that they have adopted this mechanic and done nothing to make it mm. to, to formalize it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Other than say this is this mechanic, mm. I would love it if they. Uh, if there was some weapon that when you weapon swapped it, he like, he, he, like the animation has him doing something mm. and, and that makes sense that yeah. when he gets it back, it's reloaded. Yeah. But the, none of that exists. Or if it's like, like a mod you can pick up that yeah. you can do and then all your weapons have this extra yeah, something like, thing like that. or something like, yeah, I get it though. Something in yeah. universe that makes sense yeah, instead exactly. of just like, this is just a raw game mechanic. Yeah. Like, it's happening just cause. Like a lot yeah. of a lot of the weapons have two modes, mm. and if it was when you swap modes, it reloads, mm. and there is some sort of a thing yeah. associated yeah. with that. That that could be cool, but I swap weapons specifically yeah, just yeah. feels a bit. It, I it think looks it's, a bit silly. I, I, I really especially think, yeah. If if you are watching like a high skill player playing, mm. you're gonna see them doing this all the time, and mm. you're not gonna know why. Yeah, if you, unless you know why. See, I I think I think just not them not mentioning it at all and having it as something that you just discover would be kind of neat i guess i i would prefer it and not just be exist like, at all oh, it's a mechanic <laughs> i think yeah like why not just make that not a thing yeah it 
There are also yeah. better ways to reduce reload time in games. Yep. Like Gears of I think it was Gears of War was the maybe the first one. Actually, I don't know that that's true. Where like there's just a little bar that appears and there's like a sweet spot on the bar and if you hit the uh reload button again when it's when the Oh yeah. things progress to that thing, then you get like a to that button then mm, um, speeds it up. It halves the time it yep. takes to reload and I like really like that as a mechanic in shooting games because it's like then it's a skill test of like how good you are at reloading, which works yeah. in any universe where you've got to reload. Yeah, that is you could be better at reloading. Yeah, that is really good because like how many times in games it's like you're, sh- you're like you're stuck in a reload just waiting yeah. for the reload to happen and um, while you're getting shot at like and you could be like <laughs> timing your like like click or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Into the Gungeon has a entire weapon based off this where it gets faster and faster and more damage each time you get it successfully oh, but it wow. gets to the point where the bar is just like it's too fast flicking yeah, across yeah. the screen <laughs> see i think that's cool that's like directly adopting yeah it and formalizing it in a way that the specialized tool weapon mm. it doesn't it's not a generalized mechanic and yeah yeah anyway yeah that's my I, rant about yeah i was just weapon. gonna say I, I i guess it's like how much you care about immersion Really, that matters. It's not even immersion. It's like it's it's like uh, uh, learnability from an outside perspective. Mm. You know, if I'm watching a good Doom player, and I'm seeing this, and I'm not understanding why. Yeah, that to me is you like, would see this in like like Counter Strike or Quake, yeah, or this kind of thing, and you'd know that there's a reason for them doing it. But like yeah. Doom, Doom is a single. Like it was, it's was Doom player. ever competitive like that? Like not in the same it, way where you'd no. need that level of like, here's this like gameplay thing that I can take advantage of, like bunny hopping kind of thing. Yeah, you know, like you, you know, like that thing of I can't remember is it Quake or something? Quake had done bunny hopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quake it's, was very it, bunny hoppy. It's a, it's the same kind of thing of as if like Doom was like pops up with a thing and says. If you if you bunny hop, you uh, move faster, and then yeah. now you're just expected that, to bunny hop everywhere. It would be very <laughs> like weird. That might actually be the case in one of the Quake games. <laughs> well, that it pops up and tells you that. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not worried about Quake. Though. Anyway. I'm, I'm thinking about Doom. Anyway, yeah. um, we're we're out of time. Yep. Uh, if, we've answered all your questions, so send us some more. Front seat questions at gmail dot com. Uh, we love hearing from you, and we'll try and answer them. More often than once every year. Yeah, some of them I had to just take off there because it's been like two years yeah. and you never got around to it. Sorry. Um, but uh, thanks, guys. Um, Thank you. Have fun with Diablo. I'm, uh, now that we've talked about it, I don't think Blake's gonna play it all. No, I'm, I want to keep playing. I've um, I didn't even get and I didn't even like say all that much about it really. But like. It has, like, I've discovered, like, a little bit of build diversity that has got me interested. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it more next yeah, time. Yeah, we can, we can talk about it next time. time. Yeah. Um, uh, and we'll be back in a couple weeks, hopefully. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Real talk, though, it's like only two months until Zelda. Is it only two months? Yeah. Holy. I thought that was... Maybe a month and a half. Oh, my God. It's like halfway through May that I think. Jesus. You know, I never actually look at um, when games release. (laughs) Like, even though they're on the they're out on early access, that's it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Because, like, chances are... Most of the games you play don't release. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's true. Uh, (laughs) I did see... Uh, one of my mates, um, Fabian Post, uh, sent me a trailer of, like, a release trailer of a game that I've already played on Early Access. Yeah. So I just feel like, ah, I've already played yep. it. I'm not really. Yeah. yeah. And this is the biggest problem with your whole Early Access. <laughs> my whole thing. life. Your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Do you want to have a listen?